Welcome to this podcast from Stratfor, leader in global intelligence. Global attention remains focused on the Middle East today. The U.S. Secretary of Defense has moved on from Israel to Iraq for a surprise visit, and the National Security Advisor is leading a delegation that arrives in Israel tomorrow. But today, we'll focus on a different part of the world, in Ukraine, where the head of the Russian Orthodox Church is making a 10-day visit. Hello, and thanks for tuning in to the Stratfor Daily Podcast. I'm Marla Dial. In one of our podcasts last week, we were discussing U.S. Vice President Joe Biden's travels through the former Soviet Union. It was no accident that he traveled to both Georgia and Ukraine, two of the most politically sensitive states on the Russian periphery, so soon after President Barack Obama's talks with Russian leaders in Moscow. The Russians are touchy about Western involvement in those regions, and with that in mind, we'd have to say it's no accident that the Russian patriarch, Kirill I, has arrived in Ukraine so soon after Biden's visit. It's his first trip outside of Russia since taking over as head of the Russian Orthodox Church in February, and his mission is to cement Moscow's control over Orthodoxy in Ukraine. In that country, the church, much like the populace itself, is almost perfectly split. You can practically draw this on a map. Ethnic Russians make up nearly 20% of Ukraine's population. They live mostly in the east and the south, and about 30% of Ukrainians consider Russian their native language. There's a natural gravitation there toward Moscow, and it underpins the practically constant political conflict between government leaders and Kiev. You might recall that Joe Biden chastised them over that during his visit last week. Religion is part of that identity crisis also. There are two Orthodox factions in Ukraine. One of them is independent and based in Kiev, but the more dominant faction, known as the UOC, is the one led by Kirill I, and it's controlled by Moscow. The pro-Western president of Ukraine is driving to unite the two factions and shore up Kiev's control over the Orthodox Church, so the Russian patriarch's visit is obviously a move to countermand that. But it also seems to be more than that. And again, Joe Biden comes to mind. The vice president made at least two important statements last week. One of them was a rejection of the notion of spheres of influence, meaning Russia's. The other, which was published by the Wall Street Journal, was an observation about Russia's substantial economic and demographic weaknesses, which he seemed to think are undermining its potential as a geopolitical rival to the United States. That's no doubt true in the long run, but as Stratfor founder George Friedman notes, Strategic power for Russia has rarely been tied to economic strength. The leadership in Moscow, under both the Tsars and the Soviets, found other ways of controlling society, and that gave Russia undeniable power in the region and the world. Today, the travels of the Russian patriarch, a figure with enormous social influence in his own right, through a country as important to Moscow as Ukraine, seems very much a case in point. That's all for today, but there's much more detail on this issue available at our website at www.stratfor.com. You'll find analysis on Kirill the First trip to Ukraine, as well as George Friedman's weekly discussing Russia's economic and geopolitical power at our homepage. I'm Marla Dial. Thanks as always for listening.